Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Brad and Ralphie, how you guys doing today? Well, it's Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Andre from Belgium is there. And Andrew, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. So let's see. Uh, that was a tune called Cooking. And cooking is a, it's called a uh, bird blues. It, it's a Clifford Brown tune. And the changes are uh, B flat, and then it goes A minor seven flat five, D seven, C minor C seven, F minor B flat seven, and then E flat, E flat minor, D minor, G7 or G or D flat minor, then C minor, F, and then the turnaround. So it looks like this. So anyway, that particular song uh, really helped me a lot. It was uh, one of those kind of <clears throat> it was one of those kind of tunes that <laughs> that um, will really make a big difference in your playing. And I and I've got a lot of lessons on that, and because it made a huge difference in my playing. One of the things, um, it gets you so over changes. And uh, when I first learned that song, Ted, you know, my um, stock with Ted Green went up a hundredfold. And so uh, it was great. 
Okay, good morning, Andre from Belgium and from Florida, Jim. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining us. Popping in during lunch here in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Joe Leonard. Is that Joe Leonard from, from uh, Santa Cruz? The, the kindergarten teacher? Is that right, Joe? Anyway, thank you for joining us. And Tom Johnson, thank you. And good old Eddie Davis. Thanks, Eddie. Eddie, are you coming to camp? Joe, are you coming to camp? Come on, guys. Get with the program. You guys live around here. Um, so um, I haven't announced yet who we're going to have uh, as a special speaker or a special guest, but trust me, it'll be good. Um, let's see. Uh, so anyway, that tune is cooking. And uh, it gets you soloing over changes. Hear the changes move. song at camp one year and Todd afterwards said wow I, that is really a cool song because you could just go nuts with the ideas So who are we having? I don't know yet who we're having at camp. It'll either be one of seven people. Uh, but anyway, um, so I, I just got to make my phone calls. Um, God, I got to hear like Conan O'Brien this morning. Good morning from the Netherlands. Wow, sweet. So what I thought we'd do today, one of the things is... Uh, we're going to, uh, I want to talk about some guitars. Check this thing out. Can you, this is a 2015 Golden Eagle. This might be one of the last years they made this guitar. And uh, I was able to pick this up. And uh, I. this thing is mint, mint city. Um, I've got a video on it and I'm going to be, putting it out soon. I had a lot of trouble putting in the um, pictures on my website. So solid spruce top. It doesn't have the H, uh, you know, tailpiece because they stopped making those and they went to these, uh, which is fine with me. And uh, it's got a Seymour Duncan. It's one of those ones signed, it's Seth Lover. And um, Ebony fretboard. And it is just a spectacular guitar. And what a sound, huh? Let's see, what's the song? for this song. Anyway, it's sweet sound. I'm not going to keep it. I already have one of these. Um, I have one that I put a bunch of marks on it in dings and stuff. And I just can't do that to this. 
I'm going to offer this up to some lucky student. Oh, it's 5.15. Where are you at? Good morning in the Netherlands. 5.15 in the Netherlands. Wow, cool. So anyway, um, um, yeah, I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to, like I said, offer it up. The, you know what's funny? Check out the neck on this thing. I mean, it's gorgeous. Wait a minute. One, we're going to look at a few guitars today because it's my favorite thing to do. Look at that flame. Isn't that cool? This is a once in a lifetime guitar. Buy once, cry once, and you're done. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it just, the guitar when I got it didn't have a strap button. That tells me one thing it never left the house. And that's the, and the guy never played it. He couldn't have. Uh, actually, the guy it was kind of a collector guy. So, you know, they just buy them and they just sit there. Because the guitar was never set up, when I got it, the, I had to recut the nut. The nut was not cut correctly. The bridge was not cut correctly. I had to reshape the, the radius of the bridge. And, and that's a pet peeve of mine. If you've got a radius of a fretboard, like this, that's say 12 inch, and now you got you put a 16 inch radius on there. the The middle strings are going to be too close, and the and the outer strings are going to be too far away. So you got to have a correct radius. The eagle is 25 and a half inch scale length. And so anyway, this is like the West Montgomery version. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that uh, is uh, a real nice find. I'm really, <laughs> really pleased. Uh, but I, I've been going nuts. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll show you some other things. Where are we at? Um, so anyway, we got Gail joining us. She's typing in all those little things that say Rich Severson in the comments. Uh, and Wes as well. Wes is doing his, the filming of all this stuff. There he is. There's Wes. He's got that happy face. There. <laughs> and... Uh, He's gonna go surfing today. So look, if we got the tip jar for Wes, if if you feel so inclined, leave a little tip for him. Uh, okay, so let me show you this guitar first uh, before we move on. I'm this this thing is spectacular. If you're in the mood and you want to spend your stimulus money, and they put a I tell you what, they put a switchcraft jack in there and you can barely get the son of a gun out. But check out this thing. This is a Super Eagle, which is like a Super 400. And that means it is a 18 inch. <laughs> it's a big mama. 18 inch guitar. Come on, where's this strap there? So it pretty much the same thing, except 18 inches. Um, so let's check this out. This guitar is, uh, I just got it. And uh, the damn jack, I, you know, some of these old heritage guitars, jacks, you got to have a, uh, it's like the, uh, um, the jack going into it has to be super fat 
some of them you put in and it doesn't sound like you can't get it to sound. Now, this guitar, uh, when I got it, I uh, haven't really done anything except I thought, you know, this guitar really should sound better than it does. And so I raised the pickup rings, the pickup off the, off the, uh, if you can see that, see how they're raised up, just the hair. And that lets that top breathe and vibrate. And it made a big, big difference. See what I mean about this? So let's play a tune. Let me have another shot at that one. 
Hey, anyway, so that's uh, just the way you look tonight. And I thought, well, I'll try doing that. And anyway, uh, that's a great tune, isn't it? A lot of people, you should learn that tune. A lot of people love that tune. Since it was in the uh, Father of the Bride. Okay. So anyway, what do you think of that? Let's take a look at the back of this guitar. By the way, this guitar does have a crack in the top. Can you see that right there? Ah. It's hard to see, but you can feel it. It's been repaired. And, you know, a friend of mine, one of my, my students bought a Super 400 uh, or, no, an L5 with a crack in it. And, uh, you know, you, you get them a lot cheaper. And this has been cleated and fixed. So, you know, cool. What the heck? It doesn't matter. So, anyway, there is there is the crack. It goes from there to there. And why did that happen? Who knows? It could have been a natural thing. It could have taken a hit. I don't know. But it cracked. And that's why... Guitar manufacturers were making laminate tops so they don't crack. Okay, but they don't sound like one of these. So uh, what do you think? The Super Eagle or the Golden Eagle? Which one? Which one of the two sound the best? Um, yeah, let's take a look at the back of this just for giggles. Yikes. There it is. Doesn't have quite the flame. You notice how it's just the opposite of the other guitar. The other guitar has got flame in the middle and it's plain on the other side. This is flame on the side and plain in the middle. Isn't that funny? So who decides what to do when what? The year of this, ah, oh God, I forgot what year this is. So anyway, the newer Eagle, the 2015 doesn't have this tailpiece, doesn't have this bridge. It's got just a stock bridge. And uh, really, that's about the difference. And now these are Seth Lover pickups as well. Come on, come on. I got to fix that. So I don't know if I'm going to sell this or not. I don't know. I don't have one of these. And for the guy who's got everything, yeah, I probably need it. Let's start with our Lick City. Lick City. And what we're going to do today on the Lick City is this. We're going to look at the Lick that we talked about last week. By the way, doesn't that seem like a, the, the week? Takes a long time for the... I don't know, for Wednesdays to roll around. Sundays, it seemed like it was like you turn around and it's Sunday. The Eagle wins. Which Eagle? They're both Eagles. Golden Eagle, Super Eagle. Golden Eagle, Super Eagle. Okay, cast your vote, please. 18-inch Kenny Burrell vibes, yes. <laughs> Okay, this lick is from a thing called Diagramming 251 Licks in Major. And basically what we did with this particular lesson is we took the lick that was this lick. we kind of all de decided that it was a Charlie Parker lick. And we, di we diagram it. Now, basically, we've got like a melodic minor going on here, an A blue scale, a, a flat melodic minor scale, something, and then uh, resolving to C. So if we take that information... Now let's turn it into a different lick. So it looks like this. Ah, wait a minute. Let me 
do that again. Here we are. Here's a D minor chord. A G7. C major 7. And I call this a little stinger at the end. Where we're, Here's the resolution of the C major chord. And we're playing A blues against it. And then going off, reaffirming the tonal center by playing the dominant chord of C, some kind of altered G chord, and then resolving it to C. So now our, here's what our 2 5 one like. That sound cool. So here's D melodic minor, and then we're into this A blues thing. Um, and then G, G augmented. Uh, this is right out of the A flat melodic minor scale. Then A blues for C. And then A flat melodic minor, and then back to A. And then, of course, you want to be able to transpose it. Here's F minor. Okay, so there's our lick. And, you know, diagramming licks, trying to figure out what makes them tick is a real important thing to do. And if you could do that with everything you come in contact with, uh, you're going to be golden, okay? You're going to learn from it. So it's a beautiful thing. Ay, ay, ay. So you got your coffee? Get your coffee. Come on. So the golden eagle, right? The golden eagle wins over this. And this is probably 20 years older than this. So are they building bitchin' new guitars? Yeah, they are. Eddie Davis says the super. Yes, the super wins over this. They're not building them as good as they used to. <laughs> ah, just kidding. Um, they are. They are building them really well. I was unhappy with the setup on that. I, I don't know why it left the factory like that. It's crazy. John O'Connor, hello. Uh, John O'Connor. Hey, Rich. From YLP. Is that John O'Connor from YLP? Um, let's see. Worked out chord melody for Vieta Rose, but not happy with it. Just does not move like the voice of Edith Pyloff. Play, Play that one. I don't know it, but I'll work it out. I, I'll work it out for you someday soon. Yes, that is the same one, the same John O'Connor. Hey, John. No, the super sound much better to me. If the crack doesn't bother you, keep it. It suits you. Well, thank you. No, the crack does not bother me. Yeah, I don't, I, <clears throat> there's a joke there somewhere, but I, okay, I got cracks all over me, man. So. Uh, I, it doesn't bother me at all. It's been cleated. When it's been cleated, it ain't going anywhere. Basically, what they do is they take another piece of wood, and they stick it under there, and glue it up. What? I think it's down here. Where's that crack? I don't know. They glue it up there, and uh, it ain't going anywhere. 
Wes, what's up, man? John O'Connor says. Wes says, John, what's up? What is up? <clears throat> I'll tell you what's up. The price of gas. Good God. Gail went to the gas station and filled up, and it was uh, about what, 10 or 11 bucks more than it was before. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Yeah, he's uh, going to be turn out to be one of the best presidents China ever had. So um, don't get me going on that. I probably shouldn't. How, how do you lay up, you stop something like that? We're in the middle of a pandemic. People are out of work. And let's crush a, thousands of jobs. Let's start ruining everything. And by the way, let's we're in a pandemic. Let's let in. Everybody, good God. Okay. Um, so, Wes, dig up uh, from Reverb.com, 2013 Gibson Custom L5 Crimson. <clears throat> yes, let's not get political. I can't help it. Uh, I, I That was just my little rant. Sorry. Um, but anyway, you're going to feel it. Uh, we won't get political. I don't want to get political, but yeah, that's it. Now that there is a uh, L5, and um, that's a. I like the newer ones. They're very nice, very nice. They're, they're and look at the price of that though, and that's cheap. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. So, um, you know, hey, it's only money, but that's a beautiful guitar right there. Um, but I tell you what, I'm this guitar that I just showed you, the, the Heritage, I'm, it's, it's around five. Or you can get the, that L5, which is a cheap one. Let's go back to that, Wes, which was a cheap one for 85. Um, so if you take a look at that, uh, it's a natural, which, um, you know, I, I'm a fan of natural. I, I like it because you don't see dings. But uh, I tell you what, uh, I think it's easier for them to produce a natural than it is a sunburst. A sunburst takes a lot of work. But look at that. That's a beautiful guitar. And... Uh, I, uh, if I had the money, I would buy that. I mean, I like the newer ones, to be quite honest. I like the new, sometimes you get some of the older ones and you, the frets are low. And I mean, like in 1995, they're, they, they were, you know, like I have an L5, L4, uh, and it had low fret, lower frets, it drove me nuts. Um, and so, uh, I just, I got rid of that. Oh no, I don't. I didn't get rid of it. I got rid of those frets. I had it refretted. But yeah, I think it's 1998. They started using a larger fret, and so that's a beautiful guitar right there. I don't know what the crimson means. So anyway, uh, Eddie Davis said, "I loved your L4. I do too. I still have it." I, I just never play it. Um, I don't know. The bigger boxes now just appeal to me. You're playing my song. R rant away. Oh, bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we should do that some other time, I suppose. But try to get away from all that stuff. But. Uh, okay, where are we at now, Wes? Killing me softly. Here's a tune I put on my list of, to play several times. And you know what? I never get around to it. And, it, and I don't know why. And it's probably because I'm going to find out in a second. Let me see here. Let me just check this. <laughs> Okay. 
Now I got it. Here we go. Go. This band sucks. <laughs> That's masquerade. <laughs> you see what happens? What happens when you get old? Let's try it again. can get a high school band in here play better than you idiots god did you ever hear that speaking of ranting did you ever hear the buddy rich <laughs> chewing out his band on the band bus there's not a man among you i can get a high school band in here then a half an hour play better than you assholes oh man that's one of the funniest things and I think somebody was egging them on and they were recording it. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I didn't, I haven't played that song because I haven't fixed it. Um, okay, where, sorry guys. <laughs> this is what happens when the fetus doesn't get enough oxygen. Which by the way, I have an announcement to make and I should have started with it and I was planning on it and I forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, focus your eyes. We have another great granddaughter. This is number eight, great granddaughter. And her name is Wiley, Wiley Coyote Carter. That's what I'm going to call her. But anyway, I can't believe it. We have eight great granddaughters. We have eight, well, actually 10 great grandkids, or not great, uh, grand, not just grandkids, not great grandkids. Can you believe that? <clears throat> and you know what? Now I, had, I just want, you know, it's weird. You talk about a blessing, you know. Gail always says, Rich, you're a lucky guy. And I am, but I'm blessed. I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. And so uh, if I was lucky, I'd win the lotto. <clears throat> but you can't buy, you can't buy a big family like that. Well, maybe you can, I don't know. But anyway, I'm really pleased uh, and she's healthy and uh, I'm very happy. Guess I'm starting my own clan, yes. I grow your own help, you know, grow your own help. John O'Connor says, holy moly, congrats. Wes, can you see these comments? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, look at I'm sorry about killing me softly. Um, <clears throat> Pat Evans. Hi, Pat. 
That's great, pun intended. <laughs> yes, my band in the box is even out of practice. Uh, but I'll tell you what, let me just play. Here, it kind of goes like this. Um, uh, It's got this vamp. And uh, when I did it with my group, uh, Daryl, the piano player, kept going. Isn't that a cool sound? And so when you're doing that, you're playing, you know, around D minor. And then as the, the G7 hits, you're playing around. Uh, F diminish. Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, that's how the tune goes. And um, Gail said uh, one time, gee, I'm surprised you you learned that tune. And we actually, my group recorded it. And um, I was surprised too. I mean, I always kind of liked the song. I always liked it. But um, <clears throat> I had gotten a, a few requests for the song when, when we were playing at a wine bar. And I thought, well, well, let's do it then. What the heck? All right, uh, we're going to take a look at a performance video um, of 2018 at the workshop. And the workshop is, uh, again, it's going to happen this year, and we're really excited about it. And um, it's going to be really good. Now, uh, somebody had taken, I think his name's Bill. Bill Bill took a picture of this from Fresno, took a video. And um, it's with uh, Mike Dana on guitar, who's uh, one of our mainstay teachers, who's a gifted, gifted teacher. And if you've never studied under Mike, you're in for something really special because I took a class from Mike and uh, I thought, holy cow, this guy He's really good, and he not only that, he's so encouraging, and uh, just all around nice guy. Uh, and Pat Kelly, my gosh, Pat Kelly, one of the most humble guitar players, and plays his ass off, and has played with George Benson, and uh, Ronnie Laws, and just a slew of people. Just a wonderful, wonderful guy. It's the three of us. Uh, with Todd Johnson on bass, so you get to hear Todd. <laughs> Todd, there's a, maybe two or three people in the United States that can play like Todd. And then, of course, our our drummer, world-class drummer, Gary Newmark. So why don't you check this out? We're playing One Note Samba. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
How do you like that? That that was pretty special, huh? Um, <laughs> what I tell you about Pat and Mike, huh? Good God and Todd. That's crazy, stupid, isn't it? Anyway, uh, you know when you when you come to camp, first thing I always say is leave your ego behind, and I don't mean. Nobody comes there like, wow, wait till they get a load of me. Most people come there as like, I suck. I don't deserve to be here. <laughs> and, you know, Joe Diario said to me one time, I said, said to Joe, man, you know, how long you been playing, Joe? And he says, longer than you've been living. And, uh, and then he said, you know, I played just like you one time, and uh, I moved on. But you know what? Everybody has been at whatever level you are at. We've all been there. We've all been there. Any, anytime, you know, anytime you, I always think, always heard this, and I, especially beginning guitar students, if you as a teacher think it's not hard to play, to play some of this stuff, take your guitar and turn it upside down. Try to play left-handed. Forget about it, right? You can't. I can't even hold the guitar, let alone play it. So, um, you know, uh, we have the attitude that you know nobody, nobody uh, should try not to be embarrassed about your playing, or I just come here to have fun. And uh, anyway, and and I, I hopefully they do. I think they do, don't they, Eddie? Are you, Eddie, you still there, buddy? Okay, just try singing along a challenge. Yes, this is just a one. I really enjoyed learning from Mike and Pat at Yosemite. Yes, thanks, David. Both have great teaching styles. Okay, so check out this guitar. And this is, I bought this a long time ago at a guitar show. And I think Gail saw it first. And she said, well, that was a cool little guitar. And I thought, yeah, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to get this because, uh, number one, it's a thin body. And you can sit in a chair and watch TV and play. It's not too loud. It's It's got a real beautiful old feeling Gibson neck on it. But then, as fate would have it, the guitar has been sitting around for years and nothing has been done with it. And so I thought, well, of course, now I might, but uh, I, I'm going to probably sell it. And it's funny, I when I was doing a song, this one... I couldn't play it with beans on any guitar, except this one. I got this one out and it just felt so good. So that's why, that's what I did the video on it. But th this is called a 120T. Now this one, these have been replaced with black, shallers you know the and uh it's got a little chip here and all there you know it's and uh so we kind of just painted over that or something but that is a 62 i believe 
And then, you see the guitar behind me? I just bought this too. I'm going nuts, I tell you. I'm going to become the Kmart or the Walmart of guitars. Yeah. So it's a great little guitar to to hang out at the house. I do my lessons with these kind of guitars. These were student guitars back in the day. They were priced, right? But you know, you look at a guitar like this, okay? And let's I don't I don't remember how much these were when they were original. But they weren't they probably were around the the price of a telecaster. And you think it takes so much more work to make this than a telecaster. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So I look at this and I think, wow, this, this is a hollow body. You've got, you know, you've got this arch on it. You know, it's a press top, which is hard to do. You know, press top is, uh, it's almost easier to make a car top than a press top. Uh, when I saw him do it. But anyway, they, they kind of skimped on the controls here. You know, we don't have to put it inside. I don't know who made this thing. But anyway, <laughs> that is this guitar. And this is all original. But check this one out. I just bought this from a student friend of mine. And this is a 1966 Um. By the way, this has got this was cracked in the day. And I had to uh, repair this and reinforce it. And the jack was terrible. I replaced the jack. And the jack was too good because it, was, it held it too tight. And you just about break it, getting the cord out. It's raining guitars. But this is its bigger brother. And this is 066. 120T. The, you know what the T stands for? Not very thick. And yeah, this is, now this can't be original. This has been, this is a reproduction. Um, the bridge is original. And I went, check out this, the tone of this. P90. Um, let me tune up. I, I just, I just put new strings on this. Um, let's see, we had a request last week for... Guitar Zoo.
something like that. Anyway, it, doesn't that thing sound nice? Now, which one sounds better? That one, the 120, or the 125? This has got five more, so it should be better. So <clears throat> cast your vote now. <laughs> God, I, I humor myself. I mean, you know, it's funny. You got to watch it. This is an original bridge. And the wood gets very soft after a while, you know, and it's soft and it, it really darkens the guitar up. And um, if you were to put a tunematic on here or even a new one of these, it would brighten the guitar up. Now, I don't know if you want to do that, you know, on old guitars. Or maybe you just, you know, it's got, you hear it? It just doesn't sound quite right. So I was tooling around the idea of putting a new bridge on there, but then I thought, you know, I've done that before. And yeah, it makes it sound kind of better, you know, sound better, but, um, and then I'm like, God, I kind of wish it sounded like it did before, you know? So, but another option is taking super glue and gluing the strings on. No, no, that, don't do that. You you put a little bit of super glue in, in the hole there. You could do that. And so you're toughening up that spot there. Or you could take this off and you could spray it just with a lacquer, a shellac, and that, that would harden it up a little. So um, it's just a couple of things that you could do. Now I don't, on this one, the pickup is original. This is not original. And the tuners are not original, but check out the back of this. <laughs> that is beautiful, isn't it? This guitar is really, really nice. So, you know, my big problem is I fall in love with the guitars that I get and I don't want to get rid of them. Yikes. So. So it's a nice little guitar. When you sit down on a couch to play, it's not like this big thing, you know. It just kind of snuggles on in there, and it's just fun. Okay, where are we at? And now, wait a minute. I see Andre is here now, right? Andre says, Morning Rich, and that's Galos1, something like that. I, I believe your name's Andre, right? Thank you for joining us. Um. Where are we at? Where are we at, Wes? Okay. Way to be on top of it. <laughs> we already did the lick, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, we already did the lick. Oh, we were supposed to do the chord thing. Yay, yay, yay. Let's do the chord thing. We got we to gotta move along here. We still have another guitar to show you. One thing about P90s, they hum. No way around it, okay? Unless you get a newer P90. All right, here is our chord licks. Okay, got it? Chord corner. And what we're going to do is from our chord licks uh, uh, lesson, we're going to do a A minor to D7 to G. Does that ever happen in music? No. Oh, wait a minute. Robin rings. So will super glue help it stay in tune? Yes. I remember. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Thank you for joining us. Right. Nespresso. We, we love it. All right. Um, <clears throat> I remember this guy. <laughs> he came to, when I was in high school, I mean, actually, I was thinking of it as in grade school, eighth grade. And, uh, he came over and he was an older, older guy, but he, he said, yeah, this guitar, once you tune it up, you don't have to tune it anymore. And uh, it's tuned and he's serious and his guitar was not in tune. But anyway, 
Uh, all right, so where are we at? On gluing the strings, yes. I always glue them down. When you get it in tune, glue them. Don't do that. I'm just kidding. Any thoughts on Epiphone, specifically ES339 at about $500 new? It's much more affordable. Hey, Jim, Rolfi, you could probably answer that question because you've had experience with Epiphones. I have not. Um, I've played some of the Dot Epiphone 335s, and to me, they felt like a big chunk of wood, like just like a big pool. Or is this big? It's like just yeah. uh, they didn't have that, but maybe it's supposed to. I didn't. I didn't even get. I didn't get to plug it in. But they they're not. They're not alive. Uh, so I don't know. But things have changed. I don't know. I have an Epiphone Joe Pass and love it. That that's a little different, I think, because it's got. It's all hollow. I one time bought an Epiphone Joe Pass uh, at a guitar show, and the guy had gone in and replaced all the knobs, all, all the pots, the knobs, and the, not the knobs, and the pickups, and he had it, the frets dressed and everything. It played really nice. And uh, I got to admiring it so much, the guy said, uh, I, I don't think I'll sell it. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, all right, so that's this guitar. Where are we at? Oh, the chord licks. Let's go here. Check this out. What we're going to do is we're going to take this chromatic sound through an A minor chord. And it's going to sound like this. So, ah. let's uh, play A minor. By the way, I don't like this chord. I don't like that chord at all, but you know, it's, it's cool for a fusion thing. So it's an A minor with a sharp five. I don't know, I don't know what you, it's got other names. Um, so I would like to play this more like this. Okay. And then, so it'd be, um, oh, here's the rhythm. And that's that's a, a A flat seven flat five or a D flat or D seven flat five, and I'm playing two notes with that chord. Or you could go. the resolution like that okay so there's our chord lick okay and again you can find those at the guitar college well, so uh <clears throat> let's read some things here um, uh, I have only had experience with an Epi Les Paul. I like mine, especially for 375 bucks. Uh, you can't beat that. Jim Rolf, really like your Here Comes the Sun lesson. Yes, Jimmy Rolfi, way to go, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> um, I've known Jim and Robin since high school. You know, Rob, I forgot to tell you this. I hope you're still on watching. Um, 
do you remember you? I had a 64 Telecaster and you had the 64 Telecaster, the front pickup was completely useless because when you turned it on it, it it had a capacitor in it. So it made it sound like this, thinking it's jazz. You know, Leo Fender didn't play. You know that, right? So he, he said, well, you, that's a jazz sound. Yeah, sure it is. So he put that capacitor on there when he flipped it over. So Rob said, oh, I can get rid of that. And he was able to do that. And I took my guitar over and he, he, and now you got a front pickup that you can use. It's like, wow, how cool. So uh, thank you, Rob, uh, for doing that. Um, so Rob builds amps and does a bunch of other builds pedals and stuff. Okay, I'm going to play, let's play Breezin. We got to hurry along here. It's getting late. Eh, let's don't play Breezin. Eh, don't. Let's get into our next lesson, technique, because this is really an important lesson. We got to move along. All right, let's do the technique talk. What pick do you use? This one. It's a Tortelic, Tor, Tortec Flex pick. And I, I love these one mil Dunlop. Here's one. You can read the writing. Made in the USA. Okay, so... Can you imagine how cheap picks would be if they were made in China? I told you my loud, loud and guitar story, right? Or uh, his name was Miles, and he said, "Rich, I can get necks made in, in uh, Ireland. A guy does them for me. He does uh, five necks for sixty bucks. It's a great deal. But there's this girl in China. She's just as good, and she'll make me twelve for five bucks." That's the difference. So this is 20 years ago. Five bucks. All right, so within a, a major scale, you want to learn to play sequence. And a sequence is basically a cell of some musical statement that is then transposed throughout the degrees of the scale. Now, let's just take this first little motif. And we're what we're... Let's do it in the key of um, B flat, because you guys are B flat players. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to skip the next note and play five. I will dance. Okay, I got sidetracked. Okay, now let's start it on the second degree. Third degree. Fourth degree. Fifth degree. That's fifth. Okay, so now we have... Descending, I could go play it backwards. I could go. Or I could play. Well, let's just do that. Now this scale, let's play Breezin, and I'll show you. That is a cool little 
sequence. I call it the jazz sequence. And, and look at, let me now just play it on a couple string groups. Look at this. Okay. It's a really valuable lick. Um, and you know, anyway, when you build a sequence within a key, you. I can't express myself. It's really important to be able to do that. Build a secret. Where is Breezen? Um, so um, I'm going to demonstrate this, I believe. Let's turn it up. There. Oops, oops, the other way. Back to the sequence. Here I go again. Particular sequences is is really good. Now, look at any time you work with sequences, it opens up the noggin and the ears, and you start to hear. Well, taking something and transposing it to different scale degrees, and um, it's fascinating, and, and it builds your chops. Now, you should have heard me play this when I did the lesson. Man, I was really good at it. But uh, now I'm not so good at this, but I could be if I practiced it. But it opened up my ears to be able to play any sequence. <laughs> yeah. So a sequence is, is a cell played three times. <laughs> That. Uh, 
Uh, it's kind of three times. That would be th you know, a sequence. If I play it twice, it's an echo. Ta-da! Get that lesson. It's called, uh, Gail posted it. Uh, really good for you. Greg Hartline from Vegas. Thank you, Greg, for joining us. Anybody getting any gigs yet? <laughs> Robin Riggs is working on it. Rob, I hope you are getting out there and gigging. Weren't you and Colin going to... You guys should get together and play, man. Only two last month with the exception of church. Thank goodness for church. As more of a traditional jazz player, what do you think about the free jazz stuff? I'm not that into it. You know, usually if you're not paying for it, it's not that good. You get what you, you know, so it's free jazz. You know, I'd rather have jazz that I pay for because I know within people have really worked on it. Uh, yes, you're playing same intervals off consecutive scale degrees. Yes, or the transposition could be up a fifth, up a fourth, what have you. Well, look at guys. I think we're winding down here. There's a little tune. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. And you know what? I've kind of missed this. So I'm going to try to, maybe I'll jump on and some night just come on and do one of these just for the hell of it. I bought last week the jazz improv set. Lots of goodies there. Thank you. Yes, there are a lot of goodies. Um... Here's a great little tune. like that. Hey, you guys, I will see you later. Hope you enjoyed the, today's show. Thank you, Wes. And thank you for Gail for writing all that stuff out. And thanks for joining us.
that's what I get for reading this crap when I'm trying to play. Anyway, thank you, guys. I will see you later. Bye for now.